Good evening. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are grateful and thankful to be in the house of the Lord today. We thank God for each of you. Happy to see you tonight. Thank God for the much needed rain. We appreciate that. We are thankful that he brought us safely here. So at this time, we come for our Wednesday night Bible class. We thank the Lord for his word. So let us have a word of prayer. Gracious Father, we just come now in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We come, Lord, with thankful hearts and bowed heads, saying thank you, for we realize that every good and every perfect gift come down from the Father of lights. And Father, we know that you are the Father of all mercy. You're the God of all of our comfort. And you're the one that comforted us in our tribulation, that we may know how to comfort others in all of their trouble. And Father, we pray now, uh, thank you now for your uh, unconditional love. We thank you for your mercy that is everlasting and your truth that endures to all generation. We thank you for saving us and loving us and protecting us and bringing us safely this far through another day. We thank you, Lord, for the healing that you've granted us, the prayers that you've heard. We thank you above all for your son Jesus and his finished work on the cross. We thank you for your glorious resurrection power that raised him from the dead. And Father, we pray for our sick to be healed. We pray for our lost to be saved. We pray, Heavenly Father, for the bereaved to be comforted and consoled. We pray for that situation in uh, California where the lives have been taken, Lord, seem like for no reason, but we know that you're God, and we know that it didn't surprise you, and we know that you're yet in control, but we ask you to comfort those families that has been affected, Lord, comfort and console. We pray for the injured to be healed, and Father, we just pray for the situation with the machete where uh, the man took it out on his family. We pray for their healing and their recovery. And Father, we pray that hearts of men and women, boys and girls everywhere will be changed. Pray that salvation will come. We pray that you will touch their hearts, that they might know that they're sinners and that they need to turn to you. And Father, we pray for salvation for the lost. And Father, we pray for our Bible study, that it will be fruitful. We pray, Heavenly Father, that your word has gone out. And we know and satisfied that it will not return unto you void. Let it convict and convince and make whole. We pray for our country and our nation, our leaders. May their hearts, minds, and lives be unshackled. Teach teach us, Lord, to pray. Teach us how to pray and what to pray for. Don't let us be satisfied unless we are praying, getting a prayer through unto you. Bless your churches everywhere. And let us be what you have called us to be in these last and evil days. In Jesus' blessed holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to talk a little bit more about uh, from St. Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. We kind of went over that on last week. We was talking about the profitable and unprofitable servants. And we need to understand that the Lord want his people, his children to be profitable servants. And one other thing that we learn, I think we learn from this uh, parable, <clears throat> is that the Lord gives us according to our serial abilities. So none of us, think about this now, uh, if we've been saved and God blesses us with what he know we're able to serve with. In other words, Could it be that God never blesses us overwhelmingly because he knows what we can handle and what we cannot handle? If we look at the story, he gave all of the servants according to their serial ability, according to what he knew that they could handle. And even he gave the first one, uh, what, five talents, two, and then the last one, one. So he gave all three of them according to their serial ability. And it just turns out that he was right. He knew exactly what he was doing. But we need to also remember that the last one, the third one that had the one and went and dug a hole and hid it and didn't put it to an exchange, he had the same opportunity. 
to use what he had, what he had been blessed with. And so this is something that uh, stands out to me that we, the Lord, and we're going to look at the master as the Lord and the church as the servants. The Lord expects us to put into use and to make good on and be good stewards of whatever he blesses us with. Amen. It's no time for us to look at somebody else's and to say how hard the Lord is. If we notice the last one, he talked about, I knew you was a hard man. Well, the Lord didn't let him off on that. So let's look at verse, 20, uh, verse 24. I believe it's somewhere around in there. We'll start there. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man. Now, if you know all of that, look like you would have tried to do something with what the Lord gave you. You knew he was a hard man. Now, could it be that this is just complaining and grumbling because he didn't get the same as somebody else? And so we have to watch out for that, my brothers and sisters. Because he said, I knew you to be a hard man. Watch this. Reaping where you have not sown. <laughs> Think about what he's saying. You looking for some thing where you hadn't put anything in. Well, he gave you the one talent. So you're not being accurate with what you're saying, young man. He did sow in you, but you refused to sow what you had. Amen. He didn't sow what he was given, even though he was given one talent. Somebody, the uh, New Living uh, Bible, I was looking at it, reading it today from uh, this same passage, and the New Living Translation that gives Cause puts it in money where we can understand it. 5000 gave one $5,000, one $2,000, one $1,000. We put it in dollars, cents, and dollars where we can understand it. So the one that had the 5000 went and traded, put it to good use. The next thing you know, he had gained five more thousand dollars. Come on, somebody. The one with 2000 he went and worked and become a good steward, put it to an exchange. Next thing you know, he had, what, two, uh, 4,000. And then the one didn't do it. One, the one that had the $1,000 decided he'd go and hide it and protect it. And when the Lord, the master, come to get the report. Now, listen, the master did come back. And what, get this. He did call every one of them before him for what? A report on what they had done. So this tells us that we're not going to go sweeping through the city. No, we're going to stand before the Lord and give an account for what he has blessed us with. Amen. And so we will have a choice. Are you going, we're, going to make, we're going to use what he blessed us with. All the Lord, seems to me, all the Lord ever asked us to do is to use what we have. Remember when Moses was at the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army was gaining on him? And the Lord told Moses, tell the people to go forward. And Moses thought, man, I just got through praying. And this is what you come up with? Just me to tell the people to go forward? And he says, what do you have? I, I got this same rod I've been having. He said, well, use what you got. Stretch it out. Stretch it out. And when Moses obeyed and stretched it out, guess what? God went to work. That's all God asked us to do is use what we have. Amen. God, there was Peter and his fishermen out there. Been, they were expert fishermen. Ain't no doubt they'd sold fish everywhere. But this particular night, they had not caught what? Nothing. And the Lord says, 
Cast your net on the other side. Well, they still had their net, didn't they? They obeyed, and guess what? Fish just came and filled up the net so much so that they couldn't hardly get it in. So all the Lord asked us to do is use what we have. Amen. And on another occasion, the Lord used old Peter's fishing boat to preach with. So the Lord, be a good steward of whatever the Lord has given us. Amen. Give it. Sometimes the best thing you can do is give it back to the Lord. If it ain't enough, this guy should have took what, if he didn't think it was much, he should have the, at least put it in what? The bank so he could have drawn some interest. He ought to have had something. And I believe this is in the text. <clears throat> I knew that you were a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathered where you have not scattered seed. No, it looks like you're the one doing that, buddy. Look at verse 25. Now, we can always make an excuse why we're not doing what the Lord would have us to do. We can always make an excuse why we are not using the talents, the abilities, the gifts that God has given us. We can always make an excuse. And most of the time, we put it on someone else. This person puts it on his master. Look at verse 25. And it's, and I was afraid. He was afraid. The, the master dropped a thousand, let's just say a thousand bucks on him. And he was afraid. <laughs> because he knew so much about it. And so you was afraid. This is what he said in Matthew chapter 25, verse 25. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. A lot of scholars think that this has to do with silver, but we put it in money figures so we can understand it. Look, look, there you have what is yours. He's only giving his master back what he gave him. Seem like this text is telling me that God is not expecting us to give him back what he gave us. He is expecting us to give him a return on his investment. God invests in people, in his children, in his servants, and he's expecting a return on his investment. We don't think God is the best businessman of all. Amen. Amen. And so all this person, the last person, all he was able to do, the let's call it what the Bible says, the last servant. Mm -hmm. These were servants. They were given, the master was giving them his money. They were slaves, if you will. And the master was investing in his slaves. And one theologian said, we are all slaves we're either slaves to the devil in the world or to the Lord. We are God's slave because we've chosen to be. Come on, somebody. In the Bible, we see that there were slaves that their master would set them free. And when they set them free, the slaves would say, I got it better here than anywhere else I know of. Can I just stay? And so they would put a hole in there so they know they are free, but they chosen to be what? Slaves. They're chosen to stay on with what? The master and continue to work. And so that's what we got to realize. We chose to serve the Lord. Lord, if you'll save me, if you'll free my soul, I'll serve you the balance of my days. How many times have we heard that testimony? All right. Amen. But yet when God give us a task to do, when God bless us with a gift or talent or abilities and looking for a return, we may go and what? Hide it. Don't nobody know we got it. Now, if the people wasn't there to see that transaction, nobody really knew that he had a thousand bucks. <laughs> that he could have been being a steward over. 
Now, how good a steward are you if you hide what God give you, what he gives you? That's not a very good steward. Put it to an exchange. So we need to learn to do this. Look at verse uh, 26. Now, his Lord was not very pleased with it. And this ought to let us know that the Lord is not very pleased with us when God gives us something. Let's just say he gives us a mission and he gives the church a mission. It's found in Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Actually saying go and make disciples of all nations. We have to get busy asking God to lead us to somebody that we can minister to, that we can share Christ with. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded of you, and lo, I'm with you. How long? Always, even unto the end of this age. So he has given us a mission. What, how can we? He's given us salvation. What are we going to do with the salvation that God has blessed us with? We're saved. God expect us to lead someone else to him. We are the way showers. So we can ask God, show me somebody that I can share Christ with. I want to tell somebody about you. Put them in my way. And then when he put them in our way, we don't need to be too afraid like this man and do nothing with what he has blessed us with. Paul talks about working out his soul's salvation. All Paul is talking about, he's not talking about salvation by work. Paul is just talking about working out what God has worked in him. Letting somebody see what God has done on the inside. Unless our works show something, James says your faith is dead. Faith is an action word. Just like love is an action word. Look at verse 20, uh, 26. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. Now his master didn't think much of him not doing anything with, let's just call it a thousand bucks. Now a thousand bucks back in biblical days, <laughs> he had a pretty good pocket of change. <laughs> but he chose to do nothing with it. And listen, do you think his master knew him? He called him lazy. He didn't respond to him when he said, you are a hard man. Could he may be saying you really wasn't fair in the beginning? Because you didn't give me what you gave them others. You could at least lay two on me. You see, my brothers and sisters, we always think we know better than God. We always think we know better than God. But let me tell you, we cannot improve on what God has done, is doing, and will do. We just can't do it. God's ways are not our ways. And God works in ways that are mysterious to us. Because we can't always understand why. But the songwriter, I often wonder what was that songwriter going through when he penned the song, we'll understand it better by and by. Probably going through some things. Realize I do not understand this. I don't know why God, but I'll understand it better by and by. And sometimes, my brothers and sisters, that have to be enough for us, doesn't it? Because we know that God is good. We know his mercy is everlasting. We know his truth endures to all generation. We know that he loves us with an unconditional love. We know that he's concerned about his children. And we know that he gives us according to our serial abilities. God knows he don't want to overwhelm us. He gives us what we can comfortably use. Now, it may, not, it may be scary 
for you to do use what God has given you. According to this servant, he said, I was afraid. And so some of us, let's just take witnessing. Some of us may be telling the Lord, I'm afraid to witness to folk. I don't know what to say. So, you know, we can identify. It's always an excuse. <laughs> but a guy used to say, excuses from Christians just dressed up lies most of the time. But he says, so you ought to have, but his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant, verse 26, you knew that I reap where I have not sown. You knew all of this, but this is not the way you acted. And gather where I have not scattered seed. You knew all of this. So if you knew all of this, look at verse 27. So you ought to have this, you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. At least you could have done is found a bank and put it in instead of digging a hole and burying it. You could have got a little interest off of it. You could have gave me a little bit back more than what I gave you. You didn't even do that. You didn't even find a bank to put it in. That was paying interest. You dug a hole and hid it. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with what? Interest. You would have been able to give me back my own with interest. This is what the others did. They had what he gave them plus what? Interest. Matter of fact, theirs had doubled, and he don't even have any interest. And the Lord calls him lazy. He called him lazy. Lazy servant. Look at verse 28. Look at verse 28. Therefore, Take the talent from him and give it to him who has what? Ten talents. Who would ever thought it? And we like to say, oh, that's not fair. Now, in the world, that is not fair, right? God is not worried about fairness. He's worried about you doing what he instructs you to do. It's not fair, for God to bless us with abilities, bless us with gifts, bless us with talents, bless us with money, and we do not do what the Lord intends for us to do, and that is to be the very best stewards that we can be. Take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. Listen, all of us have different talents, different abilities, and the important thing is to be what? Faithful. The important thing for us to remember is for us to be faithful. God wants us to be faithful. And see, that takes all of our excuses away because we like to say God is not fair. God did not expect this man to have what the others had. He just expected him to be faithful with what he had blessed him with, like the other two. Now, the second uh, servant didn't have as much as the first one, did he? He wasn't given as much, but he doubled it. And so that's all the Lord is expecting. But so many times we get hung up on, that's not fair. I didn't have what they have. Listen, it's not what, how much we have is what we do with what we do have. What are you doing with what you do have? What are we doing with what God has already given us? And see, according to this story, if you're not using what you have, there's no reason to give you any more. 
in this parable, the one that gained, had the most, started out with the most, doubled his. Well, the second one doubled his, but he takes the one talent, the thousand dollars, from the guy that didn't do nothing with it and gives it to the one that has the 10,000 now. Why? Because he's productive. He's a good steward over whatever he's blessed with. So he knows that this one with the 10 is going to use this other what? Let's say 1,000. He takes it from him and gives it to the one with the ten. <laughs> now, one of the great things I get from this parable is that the world do not do business like God. We just do not see things like God. Now, one of the reasons is that we are sinful. The world is sinful. And see, what the church have to understand is that God has not called us to operate the way the world operates. He's called us to operate according to his word and his will and his way. And so we need to try to line up with the Lord. But we keep saying we want to pray like the world because the world always says we need to be the same. We need to have the same. We need equality. We need the same. Well, this thing has been proven time and time again. You can give people the same amount, but they won't wind up the same way. Because <laughs> all of us are not the same. Because you got smart people, and I'm talking smart, I'm talking about not only wise, but they don't mind working. Then you got lazy folk, and they this the master called this servant what lazy. <laughs> he said, "You lazy." And if you're lazy, it's the easiest thing for this servant to do was to dig a hole and bury, it, and worry nothing else about it until what the master comes, and he says, "I'm giving you back what you gave me." That's the easy part. One of the things that we have around our church with the offices and the pastors, we always talk a lot about let's try to make sure that the ones come behind us find it better than we found it. Because the ones before us, that's what they did. And so this is what we want to do. And this is what this lesson is teaching us. Use what God has blessed you with to Make something with what he has given you. Don't make excuses. Don't dig a hole and hide it. God is looking for a return on his investment. God wants us to be faithful with what he gives us. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, let me share this with you. This is what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 4 and 2. He said, moreover... And this is from the New King James. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found what? Faithful. This is what he wants. God simply wants us to be faithful. See? Be faithful with what you have. When the collection plate goes by, you don't have to look at what nobody else gives. All you're concerned about is what you are going to give. Because you, you and the Lord know what God has blessed you with. So ain't, I'm not worried about what nobody else gives. Because I'm only a steward over what God has made me steward over. Amen. Amen. That's right. And so Paul said, more it is required. Not asked, but required. In stewards that one be found faithful. God expects the stewards to be faithful. It's required of us to be faithful. So we need to realize that whatever God has blessed us with, it comes from him. Whatever we have. 
God has just made us stewards over it. It really belongs to God because we're his children, aren't we? We're his servants. And so the first two servants were both faithful and doubled their talents. Think about that. They doubled it. So they both received the very same reward according to verses 21 and 23. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things in and into the joy of your Lord. Verse 23, the same thing. Faithful over a few things. I will make you uh, ruler over many things in and into the joy of your Lord. The same. He didn't say, well, to the second one, hey, can you brought in 10 also? He didn't say that. He gives us an opportunity to be faithful with what he blesses us with. The Christian, think about this, the Christian who is faithful in his fear of service, that meaning the whole of our service, God expects us to be faithful in the whole manner of our service that he gives us, the missions that he put us on. Though it be small, it doesn't make any difference. Though it be small, it will get the same reward as the man who seemed to have the great ministry. Whatever God has given us, just be faithful with it. Too many times we think we can't be faithful because my ministry is not big enough. Well, if you believe that God gave it to you, just be faithful. That's all you got to do is make sure you are doing everything that you can to grow that ministry. And don't be looking at nobody else's. Keep, stay focused on what God has given you. And think about this. If you're not using what you have, what God has blessed you with, why should he bless you with anything else? When, when the servant dug the hole and buried it, he couldn't use it, and nobody else could use it. It was no help to nobody. If he could have put it to an exchange, he would have had something. It is doubtful whether the third servant can even be called a Christian. This is what one commentator said. It's doubtful that he can even be called a Christian, the third one. Watch it. What is the evidence? Well, we just read it. He called the Lord a hard man and said that he was afraid. <laughs> the Lord is a hard man, and I'm afraid. He's afraid of the Lord. But actually, he refused the reward by not using the opportunity that the Lord gave him. We need to use every opportunity that the Lord gives us. Amen? In verse 26, Christ repeats the servant's unjust accusation, but does not say it is true. He didn't say it was true. And he says in verse 27, we just read, Therefore, if these things are true, you should have worked even harder to please me. If you know all of this about the Lord, we ought to work harder to please the Lord. The more we know about him, the more we ought to work harder to please him. Let's try to get it right. The principle is given in verse 29. Let's look at verse 29. For to everyone who has, more will be given. <laughs> Boy, that blows the world away, doesn't it? And this is why we have to read and study the word of God. Because we hear so many things from the world. And they have such a good platform. They make it sound so good. You'll be saying, oh man, that's got to be right. 
But when we go to the word of God, we find out that's not the way the church operates. That's not God's way. For to everyone who has more will be given and he will have an abundance. But from him who does not have, verse 29, even what he has will be taken away. Why? Because he did not do anything with what I gave him. Could it be God gives every one of us talents and abilities and responsibilities? They're just different. And we're in the business of comparing. And because when we get through comparing ours with somebody else, we think we come up short. And so we just don't do nothing. We dig a hole and bury it. And the Lord is telling us at the day, at payday, he's going to take what we had and give it to the one that had the most. Because they used it. They put it to an exchange. They doubled what they had. They got busy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. And the church need to be busy doing the will of God. Now, busy don't mean just doing stuff and doing things, but prayerfully seeking the will of God that we might do what the Lord is uh, telling us to do. And how do we find out? Well, the biggest way we find out is through his word, through the word of God. Look at verse 30. And this is another reason that that, Third one may not be may not have been saved. And could this be that you got people in the church <clears throat> that act like Christians, talk like Christians, but when it gets down to the heart of the matter, they still want it their way. If they're not been saved, they just gotta have it their way. Verse thirty says, "And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness." Whoa. There will be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. One thing we know for sure is it didn't go well with him, did it? His reward wasn't there. And see, this is not talking about salvation. This is talking about service. It's talking about the believers, the followers of Christ, being obedient servants and being productive servants. And using what God blesses us with. God has given each of us talents. He's given each of us abilities. He's given us gifts. And he expects a return on his investment. He didn't give it to us to set on it. Whatever God has blessed you with. God expects you to use it for his glory. He expects us to be faithful with it. Revelation 2 and 10b, be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. The Lord is in the business of giving crowns for our faithfulness. One of the crowns for faithfulness, it's at least five crowns that God promises. And one of them is the crown of life. And it's for faithfulness. God wants us to be faithful. He wants us to be faithful stewards. And the Lord teaches us here, if we will be faithful with what he blesses us with, the reward is that he will give us more. This is why sometimes I tell you, you all know I tell you, because I give you another assignment and you look at me and I say, you know, the blessing for good work is you know, you get a little more work. <laughs> and so it may be, in, uh, but what is happening, you're getting more responsibilities because you what? You just proven you have the abilities to perform the task that is put before you. And so God does us like this. When we are faithful with what he does and gives us and we do a good job with it, we produce what we're supposed to, guess what? It's more Work. God blesses us with more. It's a reward. 
What real servant want to be sitting around and just doing nothing? <laughs> Some people see themselves in heaven when they get to heaven just laying around on the clouds doing nothing. I, I just don't believe that. What I, know, how, what I know about the Lord, I just don't believe that's going to be it. You ever think about all of us, God will have all of us an assignment? Now, it'll be glorious to you, but it's going to be assignment. We'll love it because we'll be more like Jesus, won't we? We'll be see as he see, know as he know. So it'll be a glorious time. But think about those uh, seraphims around the altar that's all them funny heads and eyes. They worship him day and night. <laughs> Not night, there's no night up there, but it's all the time. It's what? It's worship. That's what their job is, is to worship him, to praise him. And so we would be like that because guess what? We won't get tired either then. <laughs> we won't be limited by this body. We won't get tired. Won't be any night, so you won't get sleepy anyway. So why are you needed at night? Won't be no night time there. Amen? Because Jesus is the light. We're in his presence. Amen? So, to whom much is given, much should be what? Required. That's biblical. To whom much is given, much should be required. Now, the, you may, and this is the thought of the world. This is the thought without being bathed in the Holy Spirit. And in the word of God, we think like this. Well, Lord, you gave him 5,000. You gave me 1,000. Uh, that's just not right. And I'm going to show you it's not right. When you come back, I'm going to give you exactly what you gave me. But see, that's not a spiritual way. We need to use what the Lord has given us. And if we use what he has given us, guess what? According to this scripture, he, he readily blesses us with more. Why? Because we have proven to be faithful stewards. God wants us to be faithful stewards. This is what this is all about. He wants us to be what? Profitable servants. And we can be. To whom much is given, much shall be required. If we fail to use what he gives us, we will lose it to another. And this is why you hear me say sometimes, use it or lose it. And I believe in that. I believe in that because of this scripture. We either use what God gives us or we'll lose it. Use your talents. Use your abilities. There's people that is so talented, and I'm just talking about they are witty. God has just given, made them wise. I'm convinced that God has people that just know how to make money. Why? Because we need people like that in the body of Christ. They know how to make money. God has gifted them like that, and he expects them to use it. And you, I, you know, I know people like that. That's why I say. I struggle. They just, you know, look like they touch stuff and it just turns into money. They just know how to do it. Now God has gifted them that way. He gifted them and they're using it for the glory of God. And that's what people can do. So people have all types of different gifts that God that we are better in than most people. And you just need to use it for the glory of God. Remember, all of us makes up the body of Christ. And we use the members, we are to what? Compliment one another. Amen. Encourage one another. And that's encouragement to me when I see somebody blessed like that. Whoa, boy, that's great. God is in the blessing business. And it gives me hope with the little things that he blessed me with. 
So if I use what I have, God will keep on giving to me where I can do a better job with what he's blessed me with. But if I don't use it, guess what? You may as well take it and give it to somebody else that's have something that's going to do something with it. Why would God give you any more if you're not using what you have? And so many times people make that big mistake, and I'm talking about Christians. Instead of us using what we have, we do like this young man. We talk about, I know God, I know what, he's a hard man, and I, I became afraid, so I dug a hole and I buried it, but here it is. I gave you back what you gave. No, that's not what God is looking for. We can do better than that. Why? Because don't we believe God is in the blessing business? <laughs> you go back to the whole thing. All they were doing is trusting the master, the Lord Jesus Christ, to help them to do what they was trying to do. Isn't that what we do as believers? All of our help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. So my brothers and sisters, we can be profitable. We can be profitable. God can use us for his glory. Let's be faithful stewards of whatever it is that God has blessed us with. Your abilities, God can use them for his glory. And many times God give us abilities, we can use them in the secular world, but then we can use them in the church. Isn't that something? And he does. Because we need some of that same, that same ability in the church. We got to pay bills. We got to pay for a payroll. We got to do all these things. And so you may say, well, I do that on one job. Well, uh, could you help us out? Amen. Amen. God has given you these abilities. It's a blessing to the body. Amen. Any comment? The profitable and the unprofitable servant. Let us do, let us be faithful stewards with everything that God has blessed us with. And when we stand before the Lord, we can hear that whackman voice saying, What? Well done. Well done. That good and faithful servant. Don't you know those was proud words to hear? Those was wholesome and whackum words to hear. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. You were faithful, watch this, over a few things. He didn't call it that a lot. And I will make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of your Lord. All of us want to hear that whackum voice. And according to this parable that the Lord Jesus spoke, all we got to do is what? Be faithful with what God gives us. Be good stewards. Give him a return on his investment. Amen. God has invested in us. Where? His son Jesus died on the cross for our sin. <laughs> we says, we tell people that, well, that's an investment. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believed in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. He didn't send his son into the world to condemn us, but through him the world might be saved. Amen. Let's be profitable servants. Let's use what we have to the best of our abilities. And we can trust God to do amazing things with what we have. Amen. Peter didn't have nothing but a boat. But Jesus used it for a great service. Moses just had a rod. But God used it for great service. Amen. D David just had a sling. But God used it to defeat the giant that was a thorn in the flesh of Israel. This is what God does when we just use and be faithful with what we have. Amen. 
And I remember Dave, one of David's brothers said, who's watching those few little sheep trying to make fun of it? Who's watching, watching those few little sheep? <laughs> but the thing David had going for him, he was faithful, Jim, with those few sheep. That's all God wanted him to do, be faithful with your few sheep. And sometimes I share with you what David was able to do for them sheep. <laughs> he kept them safe. <laughs> David put his life on the line for those few sheep. And that's all God asked us to do, is give it our best. Gracious Father, again, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this assembly tonight. Thank you for each one that is here tonight. We pray your blessings upon us. Father, we pray that you will give us the faith and strength and courage and understanding that we need. And Father, we know that we have so much bad news, but Lord, give us the faith and strength and courage that we need to know that you are yet God and you're still in charge. You're still on the throne. You haven't turned your business over to nobody else. And Father, we're still you still want men and women, boys and girls, to turn to you. And, Lord, use us that we might share with as many people as we can that Jesus is Savior and Lord and that he came to save our souls from eternal damnation. And, Lord, may we turn from ourselves, the world, Satan, stuff, and things, and turn to you tonight that we might be saved. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.